every single grade. And that's the story of the evolution of Wade. All right, AB students, this is 12-3. We're going down the back stretch, soon to start reviewing for the AP test, but we kind of are already, because this was the number three question of the six free response on the 2019 AB exam. So here's what we've got. We've got a continuous function from negative eight to four. I've just changed the numbers from the 2019 exam. Very similar though. Let me show you how you could have gotten all four parts perfectly correct on number three. If you get all four parts perfect, it's worth nine points per free response multiple part question. Hey, and there are six free response. Nine times six is 54 points up for grabs. Let's get as many as we can. So how could you have flawlessly executed number three in 2019? Let me show you. So continuous from negative eight to four. Here's the actual graph of F, but it does mention on the page it's a graph of a portion of f of x, all right? This is a portion of it. From negative eight to one, we don't see one to four, so there's probably gonna be a question about that, the part we can't see. All right, let's trust the mathematics. So, question A, from negative eight to four, the area, because integration is area, now of course, when you go under, sometimes it erases part of that, it goes negative but the area or integration from negative eight to four is 10. So from negative eight all the way to four. Now, you try to find the area from one to four. I can't even see that, Mr. Wade, it's off the picture. What would you have done in 2019? What do you do if it pops up this year? Okay, here's what you would have done. Immediately realize the properties of integration. The area from negative eight to four should be equivalent to negative eight up to, let's incorporate the one somehow. So the area from negative eight to one plus the rest of the area from one to four. We did these before where you kind of split up an integral into two separate integrals. Uh, we did it with a puzzle in the first semester where you had two pieces and you put them together to make a whole. It's the same thing, all right? So negative eight to four is given as 10. 1 to 4 is what we're trying to find. That's kind of like my x. And then I just need to find negative 8 to 1. And if I can find that, I can solve for this. I can solve the puzzle and find out what 1 to 4 is. Completely off the chart up here. All right, let's just find negative 8 to 1. Let's take a look at the picture. Uh, and that's exactly what's in the graph. Negative eight to one is the area under the curve from negative eight to one, no problem. All right, so we take the picture. Let's draw a line here, here, and here. So we need some space under this semicircle. It, it said that it was a semicircle. And then you've got a positive triangle above the x-axis and a negative triangle below the x-axis. And of course, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Now, this is a major shortcut that I want you to see. I want you to notice something here. You see this triangle that's one across and three tall? You see this negative, just half of it. See that negative triangle that's three tall and one across? Okay, they're the same triangle, but they're gonna cancel each other positive, negative. And they actually want you to see that on the AP test. Sometimes they'll make a really funny crossing at like a fraction and they'll really make it difficult on you unless you spot the cancellation. Here, I'll make this a different kind of stripe right here. Stripes, stripes. Those two cancel each other out. Just ignore those two triangles. Now this one we'll find right here. We will find this negative triangle right there. Okay, so you see the cancellation? Please use that because they set that up on purpose. So then you would have done negative eight to one. I mean, now I'll tell you this. Really, you should have f of x to dx in there. The, the AP graders might have a fit because they're so picky, you know. You really shouldn't put an integral with nothing on it. That's just the shorthand that we like to do quickly. So, you know, if you do it on my test, if you don't put f of x, fine. On the AP test, be like super specific. Go ahead and put f of x, make it all formal. All right, so what is the area under the curve? All right, you've got a semicircle, but it's not the area of the semicircle, actually quite the opposite. There, the semicircle has been subtracted out, it's not even shaded. That is, a rectangle minus a semicircle. That is the area under that curve. If you remember, if it's made up of rectangles, triangles, semicircles, quarter circles, things that you recognize from middle school and elementary school, 
don't actually integrate anything, right? Just, just do the old area. If they give you an equation, you can integrate it. So area, this is going to be rectangle, the whole rectangle, minus remove the semicircle, okay? Then those two triangles will cancel, but you will get the other triangle. It is a negative triangle, so it's gonna be negative one-half base times height. So that's kind of my plan right there. Rectangle minus semicircle minus one-half base times height. Okay, very common question on the free response questions, by the way. So, rectangle, negative eight to negative two, base six, base times height, height three, minus a semicircle is half of a circle. So it's half of a pi r squared. Half of pi, radius. The center of the imaginary circle here would be like right about there above the negative five. The radius is three, whether you go this way, or that way, or that way. It's always three no matter where you go. So radius three minus one half. Okay, look at the little tiny triangle right here. Base one, height three, but minus the triangle because it's negative, right? Okay, one half, base one, height three. Okay, there you go. Now let's start to simplify this. Okay, six times three is 18, minus three squared is nine, nine times pi times one is nine pi on top over two, minus, and one half times one times three is basically just three over two. And now you have figured out what negative eight to positive one is in this picture. You've got that. Now, wait a minute. Don't forget to put it back in the puzzle. This was all the find right here, okay? So you just had one more maneuver to make, and that is that 10 equals all that plus the unknown we're trying to find, all right? How do I get the unknown by itself? Couldn't we just subtract or add all this to the other side to the 10, right? It's just a, it's a middle school process. Looks a little bit more complicated than middle school. So I'm going to subtract the 18, add that fraction, and add that fraction over to the 10, and we will find out what one to four is we will be done. So 1 to 4, f of x dx. All right, and what is that going to equal? Let's start with the 10. So you've got 10, and then you bring the 18 over by doing a minus 18. Then the fractions go to plus 9 pi over 2 and plus 3 over 2. And now you've got everything over on the 10 side. And guess what? You're all great math students. You're all very tempted to do 10 minus 18. I am too. You're tempted probably to get a common denominator of some sort. Guess what? As picky as those darn graders are. I mean, they take off points for everything. Little things like forgetting the f of x, forgetting the dx, they take off a point. It's like, come on, man. You know what? For all that pickiness, if you just leave the answer like that, you get full credit. Save your time. Don't waste your time on the free response section with common denominators, with simplifying. Just write out all the numbers. And as long as they're, they're all numbers, you know, not x's, as long as this is mathematically equivalent to what you would have had in their key, they take it 100%, all right? So you're done, leave it just like that. Don't, don't oversimplify, there's no need to, okay? You won't earn any extra points. By the way, this was the first non-calculator. Number three, four, five, and six on the AP test are all non-calculator free response questions. We've been training for non-calculator business since you were in my integrated three class for crying out loud. Yeah, we got this. All right, letter B, the integration from negative five to negative one of three F prime of X plus one DX. Okay, so there was a problem like this in 2019, same kind of drawing. So if you integrate three F prime of X, isn't the integration gonna carry the coefficient, stays, isn't the integration of F prime simply F of X, the fundamental theorem of calculus right there plus integration of one is x evaluated from negative five to negative two. This is a softball question. This is supposed to be an easy one, all right? Everybody's supposed to get this one right. Now, top minus bottom, that's it. Let's do a parentheses. Three, f of negative two plus negative two is the top. Minus, well, I've run out of room, so I'll just put it underneath. Minus, plug in the bottom. 3 f of negative 5 plus negative 5, okay? Now, your job is to go find f of negative 2 and f of negative 5, 
All right, those aren't just sitting there readily available, but they are right there in the picture. Look at this graph. F of negative two is positive three. See it right there? So that's gonna become positive three. I'll just mark that out. Put a three, and then f of negative five is right there. That is zero, so you use the picture and you put zero right there. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and simplify this. Let's put this over here, let's do, okay, so three times three is going to be nine, minus two, minus, and then three times zero is three, plus minus five is a minus five, and you end up getting seven plus five. Although I guess the way I said it over there, I guess you could just leave it like this. They give you full credit, right? You could even leave it this big mess right here as long as you replace f of negative 2 and f of negative 5 with the proper numbers first. You're pretty much done. I, I'm just so tempted because the numbers are so easy on this one. I'm tempted. I think most people across America, most students will just go ahead and solve it. You know, So it's 12, all right? But yeah, leave any kind of numeric value that is equivalent to the correct answer. You're good. Okay. So, first two, as you can see, very easy. Now, the third one that year looked like this. Another common one we have done many times in class. There's another function that jumps into the problem now, g of x. What the heck's g of x? Oh, g of x is the area under the picture f from negative 8 to, and then you just stop wherever the number is that you're plugging in. You know, what, what's g of 0? Area from negative 8 to 0. What's g of seven, area from negative eight to seven, et cetera, et cetera. So find the absolute maximum value, all right. When you see the phrase maximum, minimum, increase, decrease, isn't that the first derivative? So max of g, I'm thinking I better go find g prime. And then remember case one, case two, there's not gonna be any does not exist here. So just set it equal to zero, case one and draw a number line, and then you've got it, okay? Very straightforward, looks kind of tricky, especially with g being the integration of the picture, you know. So, do this first. Aren't we about to take the derivative of g? We're gonna take the derivative of an integration. This is where I want your brain to click in and go, wait a minute, this is the first fundamental theorem of calculus. I don't even care if you remember the name or not, okay? Just if you remember the process. G of X, we'll use that little slash on the board that always bothers me, G of X equals this, right? Let's go ahead and integrate it. We'll pretend to integrate F. I don't even have an equation for F. I mean, you could get one, but don't do that. Pretend to integrate F. The integration of F is capital I of T from negative eight to X, all right? Plug in top minus bottom, i of x minus i of negative 8. Okay, we integrated. Now, find the maximum. Take the derivative of the original function, which is actually the derivative of the integral. Remember these? So the derivative of the integration takes you right back to the original function f of t except t has been replaced by whatever's on the inside over here, which is x. And then don't forget that chain rule. And the derivative of the inside, or this base right here, is times one. That's the derivative of x. Now watch, they'll slip in a two x sometimes. They'll have like a, a two x there, which would be a two x there, which would be a two x there. And then it'll be times two when you least expect it, so pay attention. Now, minus from there, the derivative, again, of the integration goes right back to the original function f of t, but now it's f of negative eight in place of the t, but the chain rule of negative eight is times zero, and you can't do a derivative unless you do the chain rule of the base. Or some of you may remember that i of negative eight is simply a constant, and the derivative of a constant is zero anyway. All right, so that's just gonna be gone. And therefore, g prime of x is simply f of x. We could drop the one, okay? Not always, but sometimes g prime is simply f. That's it. So maximum, you would take this, you would set it equal to zero right away. Where does g prime equal zero? Where f equals zero, what is f? The picture. Where does the picture equal zero? Negative five, a negative one, and positive one. Positive one's actually an endpoint. You don't have to identify that one. You can. 
and there's not always, there's usually not an x-intercept at the endpoint, but occasionally. So negative five and negative one, and if you wanna throw in the one. So let's put that here. X equals negative five, negative one, positive one. These are the critical numbers, right? The places where the derivative equals zero, you draw a number line, and then we call it G prime. That's the name of this right here. We're doing a first derivative test. We're gonna make sure the AP graders will look. Did the student block it off from negative eight to one? Look at the picture. Okay, did the student block it off and not let it go to infinity? Did the student plot their critical numbers, their landmines, negative five, negative one, and then one's incorporated right there? Did the student put the right plus and minus symbols into their number line test? Let's see. Okay, um, now, okay, so we haven't often done it this way. You could pick a sample point. You could pick like negative six, negative two, zero, but wait. If you pick something between negative eight and negative five, you're gonna take the sample point, you're gonna plug it into G prime, which means you're actually plugging it into F, all right? But just look at F from negative eight to negative five. Do you see how it's above the x-axis? So whatever you pick between negative eight and negative five, if you plug it into F, its y-coordinate is above the x-axis or positive. You don't have to really plug in points to do that. You can if you want to. But you, this time, you have a drawing. You can just look at it and just say, oh my goodness, F, which is what we're really doing right now, is above the x-axis, neutral at negative five, then it's right back above again. Plus, again, then negative one is neutral, and then it's all below negative until you get to the dead end one. So you're just looking over there at where is it? What's the location of it, okay? And then, if you want to do a little sketch, if this is g prime, then the original function g, which is the integration of another, which is really hard for your brain to comprehend what that picture would look like, yeah, lots of luck. The best way to graph what this original picture would look like is to do a number line test. So g prime says plus, plus, minus. So original g is increase, increase, decrease. All right, so kind of think of that. This is just a sloppy, you know, jagged graph right here. It's probably smoother in real life. That doesn't matter. That is the graph of this original function. Where is the absolute maximum? Do you see it? The highest place is negative one. Now, if there are two candidates, you have to test them against each other. We've done that before, but not here. There's a clear single winner. X equals negative one is the champ, all right. Uh, if you ran out of space, you can go somewhere else on your paper because I'm running out of space too. So x equals negative 1 is where you'll find the absolute maximum. Let's write that down, but one little note. They said what is the absolute maximum value? Value always means y-coordinate. Always, 100% of the time. Well, unless it says x hyphen value, but if not otherwise stated, go find the y coordinate. Okay, we found x equals negative one. That's where it's located. I wanna know how tall that mountain is, right? Hey, kids, how tall is Mount Everest? Nepal, okay, that's where it is, but I asked you how tall it was. I want the height. I didn't ask you where it was. So then you go find g of negative one. All right, that's gonna be the actual y coordinate of the original function. What's g of negative one? It's negative eight to negative one integration of the picture. Negative eight to negative one f of t dt. All right, let's get a close up of the graph over here. And from negative eight to negative one, that's gonna be this weird shape under the semicircle inside the rectangle, but we already did that. Go back and use this to your advantage. Remember rectangle minus semi? It's right here, or actually even right here, kind of simplified for us, okay? So don't redo your work, go back and grab that right there. So negative eight to negative one is going to be that weird region, plus, since we're stopping at negative one, plus that little skinny triangle right there, which is a one half, base one, height three. Add that on extra, okay? So since you've already done the work, just copy it over, 18 minus nine pi over two, 
was the, the uh, rectangle minus semicircle plus the extra triangle one half base one height three. And you know what? Technically, you could just leave it right there. All right. And you're done. And notice that was a little bit longer problem. You've got 15 minutes, of course, to do this. So notice that A and B were pretty simple, pretty quick and easy, right? Not very taxing. C was the longer one. Okay, they're gonna have one in there that's a little bit longer. And then we go right back over here to D. Here, we'll just turn this right over here. And then letter D is going to be very short and sweet. So you've got one that's longer. Save time by not simplifying in the end. That's our new trick of the day, right? Okay, so. Limit as x approaches negative 1 of this weird fraction. All right. Remember limits? Remember the first plan of attack for a limit? Take the negative 1 and just plug it into x and see if it works. And if it doesn't, well, then we try other things. But if it does work, fantastic. All right? So sometimes it doesn't work and we have to try like other little tricks that we did in the limit chapter. So let's do f prime of negative 1 plus cotangent of negative 1 over f of negative 1 plus 3 to the negative first. All right, plug it in, see what happens. Okay, we need to go find f of negative 1, apparently. So f of negative 1, up, oh, this is the graph of f. f of negative 1 is 0. Okay, we also need to go find f prime of negative 1. Oops, put a prime, not a negative sign, you stupid idiot. All right, f prime of negative 1. Isn't f prime slope? It's the slope of the f graph at negative 1. Okay, let's go to negative 1. x equals negative 1 is right there, which just happens to be right smack dab in the middle of a straight line. And it doesn't matter if it's in the middle. It could be two-thirds of the way. It could be at one of the endpoints. It doesn't matter. It's on the line. Of course, at the endpoints, that would cause some problems. They wouldn't give you one of those. But anywhere on this line, what is the rise over run? That's what we're looking for, knowing that derivative is slope. So let's start here. You could go drop 6, run 2. Or you could just go drop 3, run 1. It just go to, from any point to any other point on the graph. And if, since you have graph paper, if you have the printed version here, the printout, you can actually just count 1, 2, 3 over 1, and it's negative 3 over 1. So either way, your slope is going to be negative 3. There you go. Go back over here. F of negative 1, we said, was 0. F of negative, or F prime of negative 1, we said, was negative 3. And so now I get negative 3 plus... Now, how the heck are you supposed to do the cotangent of negative 1 without a calculator? Because this is a non-calculator problem. You're not. You're not. Nobody's supposed to know the cotangent of negative 1 off the top of their head. It's some irrational decimal. Remember, don't simplify. Remember over here, over here, don't simplify. Leave it. 0 plus. Okay, if you want to drop the 0, you can, but you don't have to. They'll still count it. I really hate leaving that 3 of neg to the negative first. I know, because we've been trained so much. 3 to the negative first is actually 1 over 3. Then it would be a key change flip where 1 third would flip and become 3 over 1. But you know what? You don't have to do it. Fight your instincts. Now in the multiple choice, you have to match their multiple choice. So you probably do have to follow. Matter of fact, you have to follow all the rules and regulations. Okay? But not here. Not in a free response question. Only for multiple choice. Leave it. You're done. Okay? All right. And as you noticed, by the time... Uh, okay, I talked too much, but you could have done that in less than 15 minutes. You can do it. All right, try the homework, and you'll, let's see how it goes. Hold it now. Easily, and you've got 15 minutes, remember, per, pro, per multiple part, multiple part. And therefore, oops, three over two, and you've got a nice, We've been training for that, non-cake.